Today is Monday, July 11th, 2022. I'm here at the Onion Valley Trailhead, headed out for a six day backpacking trip in Kings Canyon National Park. This trip was very last minute and I'm getting an extremely late start. It's right around 7 p.m. My only goal for today is to find a place to camp and get the hike started before it gets dark on me. In the morning, I'll catch you guys up on why this idiot from South Carolina is out here doing a last minute trip in California. It's around 8.30 p.m. Found a place to camp here by Little Pothole Lake. I'm absolutely exhausted. It was a ridiculously long day getting here and it's getting pretty dark. So this is gonna be it for day number one. See you in the morning. Good morning, day number two. So let me give everybody a rundown of what's going on with this trip. I was supposed to be backpacking in Yosemite this week, uh, applied for permit back in January, had a really awesome route up around Sunrise and Cathedral and Vogelsang and Merced Lake, really had been stoked about it for a long time. The last time I was up in the high country there was September of 2020 and it was so smoky you really couldn't enjoy the scenery and so I was thinking second week of July I should be good to go and I was dead wrong. A few days ago, a fire started down in the Wawona area near Mariposa Grove, and last update I got, the fire was up to 2,000 acres with almost no containment, and the smoke was pretty much covering everything from Mariposa Grove north, which means if I'd went up there, air quality would have been bad, possibly to the point of not really being safe, um, but it would have been so smoky, there would have been no scenery to enjoy. And I wasn't really trying to endure another trip like that if I could help it. So, very last minute, I decided to reroute down here to Kings Canyon. And this is an area that I had planned on hiking sometime in the future anyhow. So I was kind of familiar with a few pretty good routes out here. One of the difficulties I ran into was getting permits. So I'm currently headed up over Cursarge Pass, which is an easier permit to get. The problem is it's about five hours from the Fresno airport that I flew into, whereas the trailhead I'd planned on starting at would have been a two hour drive. There's actually another trailhead on the western side of Kings Canyon that's about an hour and a half away from Fresno, but there were no permits available. So Monday morning, I got off work at 1 a.m. South Carolina time drove three hours to the Atlanta airport, had a 6 a.m. flight out of Atlanta, a three-hour layover in Houston, and then I eventually landed in Fresno at about 11 o'clock California time. Then I discovered that the isobutane fuel, which I need for my camping stove, was not in stock anywhere. Any other time I've flown out here, I've gone to REI and picked that up, and I'm in and out in five minutes. But they were completely out of stock. A handful of other stores around Fresno were completely out of stock. I finally did find a place that had a few cans left, but I lost about an hour and a half figuring that out, which is why I didn't get to the trailhead here and start hiking till 7 p.m. So the plan for today is to hike up over Corsage Pass and into the Ray Lakes area, 
and find somewhere to camp there. And I'm not really sure what I'm doing from there. I might do the full traditional Ray Lakes loop, which is around 50 miles. And I might just explore some of the trails around the Ray Lakes area and try to fish and check out some of the lakes you can access off trail. I'll make that call either tonight or maybe tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. It's around 9 a.m. Camp is all packed up. Right off the bat, I've got an 1800 foot climb up the Presarge Pass. We are currently looking down on Gilbert Lake where I wanted to camp last night, but I got too late of a start to make it up here before dark. First look at Corsarge Pass. Almost to the top of Corsarge Pass. The scenery up here is amazing, but this is one of the toughest hikes I've done in a while, especially for the first day in. really cannot get over this view. I just love the color palette. The greens and the blues and the gold and the sand color and the granite and the reds in the mountains back there behind Bullfrog Lake. Just unbelievable. It's around 3 p.m. and I found a spot to camp. I decided on Cursarge Lakes when I came over the pass earlier today and I looked down on this lakes basin. I just couldn't pass up a chance to spend a day here. And after such a hectic ordeal with the flight and the drive and the wildfire and the permits just getting here, I don't wanna rush through this area. I really wanna take some time and enjoy it. So I've decided I'm not gonna do the full Ray Lakes loop. I'm going to head up to the Ray Lakes Basin area tomorrow, probably camp there for a couple nights, and then make my way back toward Crossage Lakes here. And I don't know if I'm going to hike out Saturday or Sunday. Saturday would probably make more sense. Uh, I could kind of make Sunday work, but I've got a 2 p.m. flight out of Fresno, and that's about a five, six hour drive. So I'd be hiking out at 5 a.m., but we'll just see how it goes. 
I'm really loving this area. I might not be able to resist spending an extra day. Here's a look up at the pinnacles, which make this incredible backdrop to the lakes here. I don't know the name of the mountains that sit opposite the pinnacles here on Corsage Lakes, but it's an absolutely spectacular sight as well. I've just been walking up and down the lake shore here for the last hour and I can't get over how beautiful this area is. Every time I kind of think I've seen it, I come around a corner and it's just another amazing scene. just past 7 p.m. I just finished up dinner probably gonna head down to the lake and try to fish a little bit more before it gets completely dark initially I was a little bummed about having to cancel my Yosemite trip due to the fire really wanted to get up to the high country this time of year and to add insult to injury just a few weeks ago we arrived in Yellowstone when the flood of the century had just occurred so having two big trips back to back that we had to cancel reschedule reroute whatever you want to call it it's a little bit disheartening but we made the best of the yellowstone trip and i'm making the best of this one and these are wild places that we enjoy coming out to they have their own weather systems and you never know what to expect out here and that's part of what makes a good time out here special and something you really want to soak up and enjoy because you can't always count on that you can't always count on good weather you can't always count on clear blue skies and if you visit a high alpine place like rocky mountain national park or yellowstone or grand teton or yosemite and you have those awesome perfect conditions stop and really take a minute to enjoy the fact that that won't always be there that's part of why I make these videos because I've been fortunate to visit some awesome places when conditions were great. If you've watched all of my videos, you've seen that that's not always the case, but I've learned to really treasure the moments when you visit a place you really love and everything goes well. My least favorite part about today was definitely the climb up Corsage Pass. And it's partially my own fault that it was so difficult flying in from sea level and then driving to an 8,000 foot trailhead and hiking up 12,000 feet. It's typically not advisable. You really want to take a day to acclimate to the altitude before you start hiking like that. But given that this was kind of a last minute thing, it wasn't really feasible to have a nice plan like that. So I toughed it out. The minute I came over the pass and looked down into this lake basin, it was absolutely worth it. I knew the second I looked down here that I was gonna spend a whole day here and I don't regret that at all. 
I've read and seen photos and heard about how beautiful this area is, but there's nothing like coming over that pass and seeing it for the first time. This is going to be a wrap for day number two. See you in the morning. Good morning. It's another beautiful day here in Kings Canyon. The plan for today is to check out Bullfrog Lake right after I leave camp. Then from there, I've got what I expect will be a pretty tough hike up and over Glen Pass, and then down to the Ray Lakes area. Should be a good time. Check out this view from inside my tent. So I left both doors open, so I just had the mesh. And looking out one direction, you've got this. And here's what we've got looking out the other side. Here's one last look at the lake I camped at last night. I believe there are four lakes in this Corsage Basin with a stream that connects them all. It's around 11 a.m. Camp is all packed up. I'm getting a really late start for what I've got to do today. It's going to be very hot going over Glen Pass. I'm probably going to fry like a piece of bacon. But I'm going to tough it out. Let's go check out Bullfrog Lake. Now there is a view that does not suck. Bullfrog Lake, absolutely stunning. One last look at Bullfrog Lake before I hike out. I will probably stop back by here on my last day. The scenery around this lake is just amazing from every angle. Another gorgeous lake. This one is 
not labeled on my map. Here's a look down at Charlotte Lake. Looking up that way, you can see Glen Pass. We'll all be glad when it's over with. I'm almost to the top of Glen Pass. And I mean, it was easy, barely a mall walk. I'm kind of bummed that I can't climb uphill anymore.
This is coming down from Glen Pass, looking out into Ray Lakes. This might be my last big view of the day before we lose the sun. But man, this place is just the gift that keeps on giving. So around 8 p.m., just found a spot to camp here at Ray Lakes. I'm too tired to talk too much about today's hike. I'll just say big effort, huge reward. This is going to be it for day number three. See you in the morning. Good morning, day number four. So I wanna take a minute to share some thoughts about this hike in the area in general. I really love it out here. I love the landscape, I love the scenery, I love the feel of the place. And it's got practically everything. The big dramatic jagged peaks and the kind of wide rolling peaks and the big sweeping valleys and so many beautiful lakes trees meadows a little bit of high desert landscape just incredible it's been very warm thankfully it's been pretty breezy so that's been bearable a lot of people out here but i'll say of all the heavily trafficked areas i've hiked the folks out here have really been enjoyable everybody's had nice camping etiquette everybody's had really great trail etiquette and I've just really enjoyed stopping and taking a minute to talk with all the other hikers I've passed. Coming up Glen Pass yesterday, there was a group of seven folks that I ended up teaming up with and we were all kind of stopping and taking breaks at the same spot and hanging out. And it was just a really good time. Coming up Glen Pass was a grind and it really made that experience more enjoyable. And then coming up over Glen Pass and looking down into Ray Lakes, it was just another wow moment. I've decided I'm gonna come back here and do the full Ray Lakes loop, maybe next year. So today I'm gonna head into the 60 Lakes Basin, which is not part of that loop, but talking to some other hikers out here, I've been told it's really beautiful. And I've also been told it's a place that not as many people go. And as much as I've enjoyed the company and the camaraderie out here, a day of solitude would be nice. So I'm gonna head up to that area and check it out, hopefully do some fishing. It's probably gonna be pretty hot today, so I might actually do some swimming. It's pretty much all I got for now. Cheers.
just hiked down here to Middle Ray Lake. That is looking out toward Lower Ray Lake. It is just awesome out here. This is looking down at Upper Ray Lake where I camped last night.
finally made it out of the Ray Lakes Basin and up over into 60 Lakes. I believe I'm headed down there somewhere to find camp for the night. It's around 5.30 p.m. Found a place to camp further back into this 60 Lakes Basin than I had really intended to go. Today wasn't a big mileage day. I'm thinking maybe six, six and a half miles max, but pretty tough trail to follow and a little bit of route finding involved to get back in here. It's really hot, really buggy, which isn't surprising. There's a lot of running water, a lot of lakes, and everything's very lush and green down in here. So. I'd be shocked if it wasn't a mosquito hell. I'm gonna get my camp chores finished up, try to have an early dinner, and then as the sun goes down a little bit more, I'm gonna fish some of these lakes. Here is the little lake right by camp. It's not named on my map. It's around 8.30 and it's time to head back to camp before it gets completely dark on me. I found a handful of pretty cool fishing spots out here. Tomorrow I'm going to get up around 5.30 and head out so I can get an early start up over Glen Pass. This is going to be it for day number four. See you in the morning. Good morning. We've made it to day number five, friends. It's around 6.30 a.m. I'm gonna try to be packed up and get out of here by seven. It's about a three and a half mile hike out of the 60 Lakes Basin here. Then as soon as I hit that trail junction, I've gotta start my climb up Glen Pass. I'm not sure if I'm gonna camp at Cursarge Lakes again or go check out Charlotte Lake tonight. When I hiked the trail that was overlooking Charlotte Lake a few days ago, it looks really beautiful, so I kind of want to take the opportunity to spend the evening there, but I'm going to make that determination once I get up and over the pass.
I'm starting my descent from 60 Lakes back down to Ray Lakes. And my pass is up over there somewhere. Stop to collect some water and take a breather here. I'm at around 11,200 feet and I've got about another 800 feet to make it to the top of the pass. And I'm feeling pretty terrible today. I don't know if it's just exhaustion from the last couple days or my food not agreeing with me or I haven't really slept great on this trip, but uh, I'm struggling. But being a crybaby isn't gonna get me up over this pass. So it's time to get moving. I can see people up on the pass there just to the right of that little speck of snow that's in the center of the screen. I wonder why they call this the range of light. There's no maximum for crabs. You want the biggest crab you can get. Opposite. And it's just the same for like the, the tank. You know. Hello. How you doing? Doing good. I actually have a rare moment all alone up here at Glen Pass. So let me show you guys around. That's looking down toward Ray Lakes where I came from. Kind of see the last bit of the trail going across there. Here's looking across the other side. And that's where I'm headed down towards Charlotte Lake, which you cannot see from here. Tough hike to get here, but this view is just incredible. When I came out here, I just kind of considered this pass a part of my route that was necessary, but it's five stars. I passed this a few days ago, and when I was looking back at my footage, I realized that on camera, this looks like a puddle. But this little pool here is probably about 80 feet across, and I don't know how well it translates, but it's just some of the most vibrant blue water I've ever seen. Which says a lot if you've watched the video this far, because I've seen a lot of pretty blue water. Sorry I didn't take time to get it on camera, but I did jump in, and it's just as cold as it looks. That is a mighty fine looking lake. I believe I will camp there this evening.
It's around five o'clock. Found a campsite here by Charlotte Lake. It's around 6 p.m. Got camp most of the way set up. I've been kind of lazy and chilling down here by the lake. It's absolutely gorgeous. Today's hike was another tough one. And I realized this is by far the longest I've been above 10,000 feet. It's been challenging and humbling and definitely a different type of experience. As I hiked out of 60 lakes this morning, I started to feel really bad, almost like my blood sugar was crashing. And I stopped and took a break and ate a little bit more and the feeling just would not go away. And I was really dreading making that climb. But I found as I started the process, just knocking out one switch back at a time, oddly enough, the further I went up, the better I felt. And by the time I got to the top of the pass, I was completely fine. I can't say enough how much I really love this area. And especially being that it wasn't somewhere I'd planned to go, and it was a last-minute, off-the-cuff trip. I've had a bit of a run of tough luck with my last few trips, actually, between wildfires and floods and snow and rain and even food poisoning on one. And it's nice to come out here and have this awesome experience that I've had. And I can say without a doubt, on this trip, I found what I came out here seeking. This is pretty much going to be it for day number five. See you in the morning. Good morning. We've made it to day number six. It's going to be the last day of the trip. Today I have to hike from Charlotte Lake back to Onion Valley. I believe it's around eight miles and 1,600 feet of elevation gain. Good times. A little after 10 a.m., I stopped to take a little break and have a snack. I'm at around 11,100 feet right now, and the pass is 11,800, I believe, so I'm making pretty good time. I wanted to be up and over the pass by 1 p.m., and it looks like I'm going to be a little bit ahead of that, but I'm not going to push it. I'm feeling pretty good so far, and the views are awesome, so I'm going to take my time and enjoy my last half day here.
right in the center of the screen is the top of Corsage Pass. I can see some people up there and some people hiking down the switchbacks. Not much longer to go now. Life is good at the top of the pass. I'm a few miles from the trailhead at Onion Valley and my phone is dinging at me for the first time in a week so I must be out of the wilderness. This is going to be the end of the trip. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.